All right, guys. So this video is going to focus on how to find the unknown side of a right triangle, specifically using the sine, cosine, and tangent functions in order to figure it out. So typically when you're working with right triangles, one way that you could possibly find one of the unknown sides is Pythagorean's theorem. But that's if you know at least two out of the three sides of the right triangle. If you do not know two out of the three sides of a right triangle, but you do know some of the angle information for it, you could use sine, cosine, or tangent in order to find it. So for this particular triangle that we have here, so we're given that this tall side over here is 10 inches. We don't know this bottom side over here, and we don't know the hypotenuse, which is labeled C. But we do know that this is a right triangle signified by this box we have in the corner, which, uh, and we're also given that this angle over here is 71 degrees. Uh, process of elimination, um, we can work backwards, actually, and we can find the measure of this one up here if it were to ask for it. We need to keep in mind that a triangle equals 180 degrees. So if we took 180 degrees minus this 90 degree angle and then minus this 71 over here, we would be left with 19 degrees. So we can go ahead and plug that in for that one. But for this particular example, we're working on finding C, which means that we need to figure out, are we using sine, are we using cosine, or are we going to use tangent in order to figure this out? Now, they specifically gave us angle A here. So angle A is equal to 71 degrees. So they gave us angle A, they gave us the 10 inches, and they gave us C. So we need to think about, looking from angle A's perspective, do we have our sine, cosine, or tangent situation here? So if we're looking at angle A, let's look at the pieces that we have here and what relationship they are to angle A. So we're given 10 inches, and this side over here is opposite angle A. Right? So from angle A, we know what the opposite side is, and we're looking to find the hypotenuse. All right, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So just based off the different relationships that they give you, that's what's going to help you figure out which one of these three functions that you need to know. And it's always in reference to the angle that you're working with. So because they gave us 71, we're going to signify that that's the angle we're working with. And in reference to angle 71, we know the, I mean, I'm sorry, we know the opposite, and we're trying to find hypotenuse. So we need to figure out which one of these functions is opposite over hypotenuse. And I have them labeled right over here. All right, so for this particular example, we're going to use sine because sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So this is how this would work here. So we're going to find sine of 71, and that's going to equal opposite, which is 10 inches, over hypotenuse, which is C, which is what we don't know yet. So we're going to be solving for C. Now from here on out, in order to finish up this problem here, um, I always say when it comes to these, understanding how to set up the problems is the most important part. Um, so keep practicing, keep working on these until you understand these relationships fully. Um, otherwise, after this point here, it's a matter of using solving equation skills in order to finish out the problem. So we need to solve uh, and find C. So using our solving equation relationships, um, if we need to get C by itself, remember that this is 10 divided by C. The opposite of division is multiplication. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by C. On the right-hand side, C will cancel with C, leaving me that 10. And on the left-hand side, I'm going to have C times sine 71. Now, the only thing I have to do left to get C by itself is now I need to get rid of the sine 71. And since this is getting multiplied, I'm going to do the opposite, and I'm going to divide both sides by sine 71. This is going to allow me to cancel that out on the left-hand side, and I'm going to be left with C is equal to 10 over sine 71. So in order to wrap up this problem, I just need to do this division here. All right, and when you do that division, you get 10.576, 
For most of these problems, we do round to two decimal places. So that means that this is going to round up to 10.58. And that's what C is going to equal. That just means that this side over here is 10.58 inches. All right, so let's take a look at another example here. So for this particular example, we are solving for A. So for solving for A, we need to take a look at the information that we have here to once again figure out are we dealing with sine, cosine, or tangent. Now for this particular example, they gave us angle B. So angle B is equal to 50 degrees. They also gave us that this bottom side over here is A, that's what we're solving for. And they also gave us the hypotenuse is 21. So in reference to angle B, we need to figure out what relationships are A and 21 to it as far as opposite, hypotenuse, or adjacent. So if we're looking at angle B, right, so we don't know opposite, right? Opposite would, this, would be this side over here, it would be opposite our angle. Now we are solving for A, and A would represent uh, adjacent to it. So it's adjacent, it's right next to angle B. So we do know adjacent, or we're solving for adjacent, and we also know hypotenuse. Again, your diagonal side is always your hypotenuse. So we need adjacent hypotenuse. So we need to look sine, cosine, or tangent, which one of these is adjacent hypotenuse. All right, so looking at these three here, cosine would be adjacent hypotenuse. So what we're going to do in order to solve and find angle A, we're going to say that cosine of 50 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is A, we don't know that yet. Hypotenuse, though, is 21. So this is how we're going to set up this particular one, and then all we have to do is solve for A. So again, using our solving equation skills, this is A divided by 21. So to get rid of the division, we multiply. So we're going to multiply both sides by 21. That's going to cancel on the right-hand side, leaving us with A is equal to 21 cosine 50. So we just need to plug and check that into the calculator, and we'll have our answer. So when I plug this into the calculator, I am getting 13.498 is equal to A. Again, let's round to two decimal places. So if I round to two decimal places, this is going to go up to 13.50. That's what A equals, so that means that's what this side over here, that would be the length of that side. All right, so let's do one more example here. So we're given this uh, right triangle here, and we're given that this bottom side over here is 16.5. This leg of the triangle is 11.3. So we're not asked to find this length over here, the hypotenuse, though if we were, we could actually use Pythagorean's theorem for this one, since we do know two out of the three sides. For this one, we're solving for angle A. So we want to find angle A using these relationships over here. So we're still going to be looking, so in reference to angle A, which sides or which relationships do we know out of opposite hypotenuse adjacent hypotenuse, opposite adjacent. So in reference to angle A, we do know the opposite side, right? So this 11.3 over here would be opposite angle A. And this 16.5 down over here, that would be adjacent to it. Again, because this diagonal side over here is always known as the hypotenuse, so we don't know that one. So we do know opposite adjacent. So we need to look which one of our relationships over here is opposite over adjacent. And for our purposes here, that's going to be our tangent. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we're actually wanting to find tangent of A. We don't know the uh, angle measure yet, but we do know that the uh, opposite is 11.3 over adjacent, which is 16.5. So this one's going to be just a little bit different than the other two examples and actually how we simplify it down. So first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go ahead and divide this out over here, 11.3 divided by 16.5. And when we divide that out, so let's see, tangent A is equal to 0 0.6848. 
So in order to find tangent A of this, what we actually need to do, so if you look at your calculator, you should have an inverse tangent function. That's how you find that. So you need to find your inverse uh, tangent function on your calculator. On some calculators, you just need to push tangent twice, and that'll give you the inverse function. So we would do uh, inverse tangent of 0.6848. And when I put that in my calculator, I'm getting the inverse tangent is 34.4. So that means the measure of angle A over here is 34.4 degrees. Otherwise, that's it for this video.